the English Channel, a stretch of sea that separates England and France. For centuries, people dreamed of digging a tunnel beneath it, but all who tried failed. In the 1980s, the French and English joined forces to try again. This time, they did it. Thirteen thousand workers, ten million tons of equipment, ninety-three miles of rock. This is the longest marine tunnel in the world. Many believe it's the world's greatest modern wonder. The Channel Tunnel passes beneath the sea between Folkestone, England, and Coquel, France. Before the tunnel opened, there was only one way to get across the channel. The journey from London to Paris took an entire day. Now, with a Eurostar train, it takes just three hours. These are amongst the most sophisticated trains in the world. Their top speed is 186 miles per hour. Eurostar really flies. It gets you from the center of London to the center of Paris in less time than it takes by plane. If you travel on the shuttle, you can even drive from England to France without leaving dry land. But before the tunnel opened, this man crossed from England to France on foot. The last time this happened was during the Ice Age. To be the first man to cross the channel by foot for 15 or 17,000 years, it was absolutely brilliant and I'd do it tomorrow again. On the day in question, he was 150 feet below the seabed, 13 miles from England. French territory was just a yard away. He was one of the army of tunnel tigers who were digging the Channel Tunnel. Graham's counterpart on the French side was Philippe Cosette. Both sides had been digging towards each other for a total of 24 back-breaking miles. Now they were separated by a yard of rock. At 11.13 a.m. on December the 1st, 1990, England ceased to be an island. We reached through, we shook hands, we exchanged greetings and we exchanged the flags. When we actually broke through, there was a wind howling through the hole and it actually took my helmet off. The first land link since the Ice Age was finally open. Graham had the honor of being the first to cross into France. Philip and myself do realize that we're involved in a moment of history and we realize that it's only going to happen the once. Because even if you do another Channel Tunnel, they're not going to break the record. We've done it. We've made history. It took the Tunnel Tigers three years to dig their way into French territory. By train, Graham's journey from coast to coast takes only 20 minutes. Strictly speaking, there is not one channel tunnel, but three. Two rail tunnels run either side of the smaller service tunnel, in which Graham and Philippe made their historic breakthrough. The tunnels were bored in 12 stages. Both the English and the French teams had to dig three tunnels underground, from the coast to the inland terminals, and three tunnels under the sea. This is not Cape Canaveral, but Folkestone, England. 
not the stages of a space rocket, but sections of a tunnel boring machine, or TBM for short. 11 TBMs were used to dig the channel tunnel. The largest weighed over 600 tons and measured almost 30 feet across. The sharp end of a TBM is only the tip of the whole machine. The main body stretches back 800 feet and is manned by a crew of 80. The gigantic rotating jaws got to work on the 15th of December, 1987. Its tungsten carbide teeth and blades began to tear their way through the rock. The TBM is a self-sufficient tunneling machine that can dig up to 190 feet of tunnel a day and install concrete lining on the walls. Many of the workers were veteran tunnelers, but no one had experience of anything so vast and complex. There was a lot to learn. When you start a project like the Channel Tunnel, or any tunnel, the learning curve is very, very steep. And you try and uh, climb that steep learning curve as quickly as possible to get onto uh, an easy drive. Soon after work on the Channel Tunnel began, the English team hit fractured rock, Work almost ground to a halt as the sea came pouring in. It hit morale very early on. People weren't going as quickly as they wanted to go. And people thought, my God, how long is this going to carry on for? And will it kill the project? For a while, it looked touch and go. But the English struggled through three miles of leaking rock and got back on track. There were criticisms of the amounts of money that were paid to these men. Uh, believe me, these men earned every penny. Mile after mile, they drove their mechanical moles onwards. The high points came whenever one of the 12 sections of tunnel was completed. The climax came in the summer of 1991, when the rail tunnels finally met deep beneath the channel. They had fought their way through 10 million cubic yards of rock. They were two weeks ahead of schedule and right on target. The biggest undersea drive in history was over. Today, the tunnel contains high-speed rail lines which carry more than 300 trains a day. The shuttle locos are among the most powerful in the world. They carry cars and trucks, and their rolling stock are the largest on Earth. In 1996, the unthinkable happened. On the 18th of November, a shuttle carrying trucks from France to England caught fire. All 34 people on board escaped into the service tunnel. Service tunnel vehicles rushed firemen towards the scene and the injured away. The rail tunnel became a blast furnace, reaching almost 2,000 degrees. The train wheels fused to the track. The disaster cost Eurotunnel almost half a billion dollars. But the safety systems worked. The service tunnel remained clear of smoke and no one perished.
Today, the Channel Tunnel is the most heavily used railway system in the world. In the first five years of operation, trains carried 28 million passengers and 12 million tons of freight under the sea. Digging the Channel Tunnel was one of the greatest engineering challenges of the 20th century. Its success makes it a contender for the title of the greatest engineering achievement of all time. <laughs> 